seminar. So today's seminar is co-organized by uh, ISOIA, ICT um, uh, uh, Computer Society in Singapore, and uh, colleagues. Well, I'm asked by several organizations to organize a workshop. So I, I instead of organizing a few workshops, I do it all together at once. So uh, today we have uh, invited uh, three speakers. Uh, we have. Uh, we are glad to have invited uh, Professor uh, Kim Jong Huang from uh, KAIST. And uh, we also have two visitors, uh, Dr. Vila, Vila Watamaki and uh, Dr. Artis Nostrati Kho. From the staff. But your first name sometimes is a different version of it. Yes, that's a short one. Okay. So uh, the, the, the seminar has two sessions. So, so uh, uh, after Professor Kim's talk, uh, we will have a break, and then uh, 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 the big break is served in another room, and then after that we have another two talks. So let me, first of all, let me uh, introduce uh, uh, Professor Kim. Um, Professor Kim uh, is visiting i Square on the invitation uh, by uh, so it's a surprise and we just had lunch with um, uh, Professor Kim is an Ajipuri fellow and professor in the uh, 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 Department of Electrical Engineering, KAIS, Korean uh, Advanced uh, Institute of Science and Technology. Um, he is a pioneer in the field of ubiquitous uh, robotics and software robotics. He was he was named as the, the father of robot football. You may know robot footballs and TV, right? He was the person who uh, invented this, this concept. And uh, he also uh, was the uh, founder of FIRA, uh, the, the organization in 1997. And uh, 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 he's now the, the president of FIRA. And, uh, IROC, the International Robot Olympia Committee, and the Korean Robot Soccer Association. And uh, Professor Kim uh, 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 is an uh, expert in, uh, in uh, 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 robotic intelligence, and he has uh, advocated the idea of uh, of uh, ubiquitous, ubiquitous uh, robotics and uh, with. Uh, uh, algorithms that we call it uh, evolutional uh, algorithms, and how it is used in uh, robotics applications. So today we are very glad to have invited him to share with us, and he has visited our labs and this morning, and uh, 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 I believe that uh, many of you, if uh, you are a member of the robotics lab, uh, today we may get many uh, inspiration uh, from this talk. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, Welcome, uh, Professor Kim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my honor to be invited to uh, this uh, little uh, you know, institute. Uh, um, today, my talk is on IT, Intelligence Technology uh, for Cyber Global System. Our lines are as follows. I mean, uh, firstly, next generation of us. On classification and characteristics, and increased definition of ubiquitous robot and genetic robot and CTRS. And I'm going to introduce you the principle of uh, this you know, computational intelligence in CTRS. I classify the six intelligences, like this way, cognitive intelligence, genetic intelligence, and so on. So, my talk today is uh, more on the intelligence part. But this morning I was introduced, I mean, you are, you, I was introduced to your research outcomes. I think your research outcomes are quite excellent, in particular in you know, perception area, you know, visual and, and both visual, I mean, recognition and, and voice recognition and so on. But in this talk, I'm, I will focus on intelligence part. So this is my uh, classification on next generation robots. So I, uh, first generation, uh, for example, industrial robot, second generation, personal robot, third generation, ubiquitous robot, 
and first generation chat robot, and finally fifth generation mobile robot. So in the early stage of robotics, industrial robot, the robot should be you know, robust and, and faster and precise than you know, human expert, mainly for manufacturing and automation. However, in the second generation, personal robot, the one who's having a robot, this robot is mainly for entertainment and, and started for our public services. The key was here is how to make robot intelligence and this human robot interaction and that's the slow motion. And the third generation, uh, I classify it with you know, ubiquitous robot, mainly for new services. Uh, the key technology should be nefitness and calm technology and things technology and context technology. And first generation genetic robot in this uh, generation is for, I mean, to start this, uh, the original of artificial species. It sounds like you know, the origin of the species you know, by the, you know, Charles Darwin. And the key, key technologies key, here is how to represent the artificial creature by you know, genetic code, I mean genome, and adaptation, I mean evolution and learning. And this one by robot is for higher you know, quality of life and symbiosis between humans and robots. The key technology should be bio and bio enabled system and bio embedded system. So I, uh, based on uh, this uh, you know, concept, I've been you know, researching in this field. So uh, first, the ubiquitous robot, I defined the concept of this one as follows. A robot incorporating software robot, so robot, embedded robot and robot, and mobile robot, mobile which can be used by anyone for any service, IT related services, by any device, through any network, at any place, any time, in use case. So uh, to satisfy, I mean, five, five Ns. Uh, five Ns should be satisfied by using this ubiquitous robot. So at the time, I draw, provide this picture, I mean, conceptually, this is the cyber world in which you know, there are many, I mean, software robots, so that can be downloaded to your mobile or mobile at home or office or car or you know, plane or something. So um, the software robot can be you know, transmitted to the other hardware system. So I provide this you know, concept and so for example, uh, even in this refrigerator, this robot can be implanted here or this one can be implanted to your vehicle or even to your mobile phone. And this one, another concept I provide the you know, genetic robot, Jinba. Jinba is an artificial creature which has its own genome, genetic code, and personality and behaviors autonomously driven by its influences, such as motivation, homeostasis, and emotion. So um, I uh, propose uh, this uh, 14 chromosomes consist, I mean, consisting of over 1,700 genes. So at the time, I provide the fundamental genes, uh, interstate related genes, and behavior related genes. So these uh, genes should be optimized, should be optimized to satisfy to your desired characteristics or personality. So I, um, you know, well, this research outcomes uh, were you know, published in uh, the I2P magazine and I2P translation. So this is the adaptation of the genetic robot. And this shows the concept of a 3G, uh, I mean genetic robot and, and ubiquitous robot and genetic robots. So uh, you know, there are some you know, devices that I explained. And this one, I mean genetic code genome can be transmitted to each device, to each device, and then and then this this you know, same same Software level, software robot come to this to your notebook or PDA, mobile phone, or refrigerator, and even this kind of humanoid robot. And uh, this information, I mean gene information, is to identify each you know, similar, similar, you know, each of similar ones. So uh, this one is the uh, concept of uh, this prediction for the robots. And then I you know, proposed this new idea um, uh, to the 208. So a cyber physical robot system, actually CPS was first proposed by, uh, I mean, the project was proposed by uh, NSF and, and, and motivated by the CPS. I proposed you know, CPRS, 
It's a new emerging discipline focusing 